the art had to come directly from the artist somehow into VR space. And this is when I also had the chance to, for the first time, paint lines in space. And that was an unforgettable moment for me. I was walking around him and I realized, this is what you look like. This is pure magic. Meeting your own character. And imagine this is not just a translation of somebody did a 3D model of your piece, rendered it, and you went into it in VR. No. This was unfiltered, coming through my mind, through my hand, onto the virtual canvas. So there's nothing in between. It's the pure imagination. And to be able to be inside my mind and to be able to invite others was to me like an unforgettable moment. So let me show you where I met him for the first time. So this was the street corner where was, I was standing right in front of him. On the left. So this is the entire short film here. This is all I needed to create. Right? So um, basically those are all painted strokes. You see that all in those layers here. And I can also just paint here, right? But once I had painted these assets, all of a sudden, I had this crazy inventory of stuff, like for example, this little uh, fence here. I can just duplicate it, rotate, move, move, repeat, 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 repeat. Right? This is pretty cool. So there's the robot, you know, and then I can just move his head around. Uh, Hello, THU. How's it going? Right. So this was basically all I needed to get started. So this is the first thing I did after the storyboarding. Then I basically looked at the storyboard and staged each scene. And then I started animating. So let me draw some trees. So the duplication workflow in Quill is like super powerful, right? So if you, for example, have like a tree like this, tree trunk like this, you can just duplicate it and create a branch, right? You can just select this and duplicate and create another branch. And you can take the whole tree and create another branch, right? So you can be like super fast in creating complex shapes. So this is really cool. And then because we have like red bushes, this is a light. Uh, red bushes, we're gonna do red tree canopies. Some red canopy here. And then the light is coming from there, so it's gonna be lit over here. And I'm gonna use the colorizing brush to emphasize the light a little bit. It will be shadow here. Maybe some warm bounds on the ground um, on the bottom side. And then. Let's see, uh, this is the tree trunk here. Move it up a little, and then I'm going to extend the sky a little bit. So, this is a color picker. <laughs> Love this sound. Oh, you actually up the volume. Awesome. Alright, so now I can select this tree, move it around. Duplicate it, rotate, it becomes a different tree. Duplicate, rotate, or maybe select a watercolor here. And I um, brush duration, something like this. And then I just become the waterfall. Right? I just paint the waterfall. Whoa! What the hell? Yeah! Applause, please! <laughs> Bruce Lee interview, you know, if you put water into a cup, you can miss the cup. If you animate a waterfall, you become the waterfall. And it is true, I feel the waterfall. Quickly, take the notch tool, and become the wind. I 
and she. You know. And this is really, really fun, guys. Just imagine changing values in the channel box or something, you know? That was always like a pain in the ass for me because I don't even know what those values do. And then you do a play blast, wait for 10 minutes, and you don't see a different difference. You know, you know the struggle. So now I have those trees wonderfully blowing in the wind. I love it. You know, it feels like coming from animation and coming from painting, dealing with all those different tools, I feel like really Quill removed everything annoying and left the fun parts of grass, right? which is really cool. So I see that it's a, a little bit too bright because this is going to be in shadow, so I'm going to color it a bit darker. The draw, um, bottom is a little bit darker, maybe. This is and tips are like a little bit brighter. So there we go. And maybe, maybe the grass is over here. And over here. Again, I'm gonna just duplicate a few frames. Maybe 10 frames is enough here. Maybe do 15. 15 is a good number. Hit play. And then nudge the hell out of it. Become the wind. I would be aggressive and be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so that's when you're in a storm, like it is right now outside, right? Another thing that blew my mind is like, you know what? I don't think you can do this, but let's try. Let's try selecting the grass over time and duplicate it. And look at it. It's moving. And I can scale it and populate it. Right? So that is something, I was like telling the engineer, dude, I just duplicated animated grass, and he said, yeah, I made it that way. I'm like, oh, well, okay. Well, thanks, this is amazing, this is a game changer, right? So then, with the black dot, boom. Now we have the eye. Now we have the other eye. So um, I'm gonna grab this guy here, and make him way smaller, maybe he sits on there. Little rock here. Yeah, that looks better at scale. This would be like a giant robot like compared to the trees. So we sit him down here. Maybe he's reaching out to something. So maybe we repose him here. He's reaching out. And he has like a finger. And this is like me. <laughs> All right. Um, hit play. And I use this grab tool here. And I'm going to move the head. One, two, three, four. What? Nothing? This is awesome! <laughs> And this is cool. 